Here we have a Husqvarna Model 2000 from circa 1975. Over 40 years old. This machine was acquired second hand by me and as you can see along this row here there are patterns that you can pick with cams. Each cam gives you a range of patterns and the cams look like this. Underneath the cam there are a set of pins and this model the 2000 has a three pin pattern that fits into a camera receiver in the machine. In order to remove a pattern cam you have to make sure that the pattern selector is set to the right point. This will twist clockwise so I'm twisting it as far as it will go to this point here. Turning the machine round you'll see I've got cam number D in the pattern cam. To remove it you've got to make sure once I've done the, once I've done the correct thing I've twisted it slightly and it's come out okay. If you just Go, if you just pass me the camera there, you can see this is the actual mechanism that it fits into. The trouble is, these are often cracked inside, but there are people who sell the part and show you how to remove it and fix it. Again, if you want to put the pattern cam back in again, and I've got pattern D here, and let's say I wanted to change pattern D and instead I wanted to have pattern cam E, you then Put, get your cam pattern here, put it into the cam, twist it slightly because it is, it does have its own foibles. There you go, and it's in. I've clicked it in. Once you have a bobbin wound with thread, and in the Husqvarna 2000, there is a bobbin winding mechanism. And if you go to the back of the machine, you'll see that you, the bobbin case gets put here. This is also the gear mechanism for changing the speed. It's a two-speed machine. I have it on half speed. And obviously there's a thread guide there and, and you'd actually use thread from the top of the machine, put onto this rod here, put it through this guide and then onto the bobbin and then you use the foot pedal. And the foot pedal on these machines looks like so. It's a two-prong plug and then you would actually wind the bobbin using them using the machine once that's done and it's wound what you need to do is with your bobbin wound i'm showing you once already been done here imagine the thread coming off as if it's coming off clockwise you have this bobbin case which is very unusual and the black springy piece of metal here is to do with the tension the bobbin tension there's some screw that one screw there that, op that can be adjusted for thread tension. So I put my bobbin case into here, okay, and you'll see there's a little gap groove. The thread goes through the groove, down the little spring, and clips out like so. Okay, turn it round like that. Then it's, re leave a bit of free, then it's ready to go into the case. And it slides in, if I put this thread free, it goes in like, that. Threading the machine is quite straightforward. I've used a rubber tube here to hold my thread more securely. It stops it wobbling too much and you can also use various parts like, like this plastic uh, ring here to hold it more steady. The thread is this thread is coming off anti-clockwise. Okay, feed it from here to the thread guide here then as you can see then it comes down through the tensioner, this is the tensioner device, this side of the defense, between the, the red mark and, and this metal tensioner, comes down, then it comes up this guide here, this way, then to this lever, okay, I'm gonna make sure that get, get it round the right way, so I go to the lever there, okay, so it's fed up through that way, this way round, back towards you, then down through this little holder here, okay, then carrying on down over this metal guide, then I'm going to have to thread it. Yeah. Okay, the threading mechanism, the, the actual eye of the needle goes from front to back. Okay, once I'm through, I can see that. And once the thread through, you then pull it through, and it's just come through. Once you thread through your needle, you might need to use a magnifying glass. That's why I have this little little glass here. 
um, if it's dark you need to make sure it goes down and then through the little gap in the press foot and out to the back next thing I'm going to have to do is take up the thread beneath from the bobbin case you can do this by moving the machine by hand here hold your thread tensioning with your left hand and then get the thread to go get the machine to go through its cycle and it should go down to the bobbin case and it should pick the thread up from the bobbin case okay and slowly and it's done there's a loop underneath there and that's my bobbin case thread simply get your little pair of sewing scissors here into the loop catch the loop like so and there's your loop and then you, you need to hold both threads say with your left hand and pull to the back and then you're ready to sew once you've threaded your machine and with your presser foot up and both threads out you then place your material this is some felt underneath the presser foot okay and you can put your presser foot down now this is where you need to set your tension i have set my tension my thread tension to match the red dots there round the other side of the machine there's another dial which you can set the uh, tension on the actual uh, foot the presser foot and again I've gone opted for default of red button to red button We've put pattern cam E into the Husqvarna 2000 I want to do this pattern here, which is the floral pattern which is the blue part on the cam and So what I need to do is the pattern selector dial which is here needs to be turned so that it, so that the actual Should really keep the well you keep the press foot down as long as the needles up so you've got blue there you go there's blue and the next one which is your stitch length which is here should be set on blue that's already set notice the red mark the red mark is the indicator with blue blue or yellow will do and again for your stitch width which is this dial here make sure that it's on the pattern cam color there which is number four okay the other buttons you've got up here this one is reverse on a Husqvarna and this one is for your feeder the feeders which are basically underneath the presser foot that feed the material through as the machine sewing so let's see what pattern cam um, it turns out like first of all I would recommend if you put your pattern cam in correctly let's just see if it actually sews so presser foot down tension set and away we go what we want to know is to make sure that the needle is actually correctly going in and feeding and not snagging okay so I'm looking to see whether whether this needles moving it should be moving from side to side etc okay and it does seem to be so if I turn the machine on it should work there you go I'm sewing along And I'm on half speed here and you should see at the other side coming out of the sewing machine that pattern and yes the machine's behaving itself and these little numbers you are so you can keep it straight keep your felt that I'm using now fairly straight as you're feeding it through okay Okay, so I'm going to finish the pattern to the end of the line, making sure you don't catch the needle yourself. Okay, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, right, so I'm near the end here. So by hand I can go like so. I can press reverse if I want. Okay, if I hold reverse and I can put one stitch in, say in reverse. As you can see the machine goes back I'm pressing the reverse button just for one stitch okay leave the needle up okay lift your presser foot the lever is actually behind the machine okay then what you, what you need to do next is on this actual hand this actual um, dial here you need to actually go like that loosen it a little bit okay once that's loosened I then gently pull the material away and I'll need to leave enough thread on so I can carry on sewing on another project snip off there okay with my scissors not the sharpest but and then put your pull, pull your thread back and then you're ready to have a look at whatever, whatever you've done
using cam e i'm wanting to do this other design here number e it's another floral design on e the yellow one so again i turn my pattern selector till it's yellow i'm already on yellow here for the um stitch length and the stitch width is already on yellow so i'm all ready to sew so uh, first of all like i say put a couple of stitches in yourself using the which will hold hold your two threads behind so they don't catch back okay um, you will find felt as a challenging material to use and you must sometimes change your needle because it will blunt your needle right so away i go i'm on half speed and i'm doing the yellow pattern on cam e which is a bit more intricate than the first one and you don't want to go too fast when you're using these pattern cans particularly in a machine like mine that's had to be repaired by myself i'm not using lots of material to make um, the gift bags that i've got here the idea is to let the machine do the work and feed through when if i wanted to do the green colored um, icon here on cam e i'd need to change my pattern selector my needles up on my machine to green so there we are it's either green or pink on there that's green um, I'm gonna have to change this to green here that's green as you can see there's a green and red there uh, that one's okay on number four okay so the stitch width generally stitch width is is staying the same on these particular patterns okay so we've got green green and green and again I've then I put my presser foot down make sure you hold your threads not too tight but make sure you do hold them so that they're not going to escape as you have a go at putting in putting in a couple of stitches at the beginning yourself okay that's it okay once you go in and you turn the machine around a few times okay feed them back and then have a go Again, feed the material through steady. Green pattern E, and I'm feeding through, making sure you're not going too fast on this machine at half speed. You can, of course, do your patterns on smaller pieces of felt like this and then just use your machine to do a straight stitch to attach them to the front okay that's coming out nicely actually the contrast of yellow uh, gold goldy colored thread on black works very very well and you can take this particular pattern stitch right to the logical end here on this piece of black felt you're done of course you need to lift your presser foot up make sure your needles up and then you're ready to cut your thread threads again leaving enough length so that you know you can carry on with another project and make sure your needle thread then goes in that gap under the presser foot and it's pulled through even though i've had to repair this machine and it was sold as parts or not working the error um on the machine was due to this particular lever the end of this lever here which was a plastic piece was snapped off but I just found by putting a bar in the machine inside it was able to when the actual cam mechanisms inside turned it was able just to keep this feeder up and that was all that was wrong with it and apart from that these machines of course you when you 
take the bobbin this bobbin uh, case out you need to clean them inside you might need to remove the needle plate there's two screws there and where these feeder dogs are you might need to take loads of fluff and felt out you can use an old needle for that um, but as long as you keep this area clean that area clean and your machines turning by hand okay if the machines are totally seized inside there are ways and means of freeing that up some people basically um, use a hairdryer inside the machine was unplugged of course removed from the mains to try and break up some of the um, almost sort of fossilized res resiny lubricant inside to unseize them and that's it really using this machine you can make items such as gift bags I went with a nautical theme the seahorses as you can see there are, there is a straight stitch that holds the actual seahorse on and Husqvarna 2000 Viking are superb for doing these more intricate stitching and the pattern on the seahorse here which is which you can see um, this shape here this sort of diamond shape that comes from pattern cam F which as you can see is the green one and I've used white thread and on the um, sea seaweed here or eelgrass as it might be um, I've used another pattern cam for that the um, eelgrass this underwater undersea plant the pattern on these uh, leaf leaves here is the blue one from F cam bobbles which are coming up from the plants which make oxygen um, are from sequins and you have to buy some sequins and they are actually glued on if you go in very close you can see that there are you can see tiny bits of glue left there you could of course individually sew each one on if you wanted to and the eyes on these seahorses the blue eyes come from it's come from a stud machine and you basically have these stud holders of different sizes and they, they, in the packets it tell you what sizes studs are and I've used for the seahorses blue for each of the seahorses in my nautical scene on the gift bag itself you will see that it has a drawstring if I go like so so your gift bag can close and hold whatever gift it is you want inside or perhaps it's just for decorative purposes and the pattern you can see that there is a wavy stitch on that and that is from again from the pattern stitch selector here you can select if I twist it this type of pattern which is all almost like a sort of an overlocker interlocking pattern okay right. using F cam you can also use the which which is the yellow stitch um, selector here I was able to put some decorative stitches on this um, ship's anchor and again you'll recognize the stitching on the seahorse with this one because it's the green on uh, path on cam F and again I've used the sequences for bubbles coming from the seabed and a much larger um, stud for the seahorse and again of course the Husqvarna is very very handy for it for using little small straight stitches to delineate the seahorse of course the seahorse is made himself from fleece or felt felt is the best material for doing these shapes and you need to cut out the shapes first in paper pin them onto your fleece or felt and then stitch you can use you can use pins to pin them and then use the Husqvarna 2000 Viking to then uh, go out you can even do these turns very easily you can turn by lifting up um, turning twisting uh, as they keep the needle in the thread but lift but lifting up the presser foot I wanted to put some ripples to make to give it a marine theme and this comes from cam number D and if you look at the actual red pattern there that will give you ripples as long as it's put up um, the right way so you can see how the ripples are on mine I've used white against black white and black the, the actual contrast is best and then you've got these sort of um, dart patterns again which which is from another pattern cam 
you use two pieces of fleece or felt and you need to put the actual uh, seams on this side which is inside out first and you can use a simple um, zigzag stitch of, of a very small width and size to be more accurate and precise then at the top of your gift bag you're folding it over and and you, you can um, then put a simple stitch along here say a straight and then a pattern on top of that if you want to secure it and you'll notice that the ends are free so there's a hole at that end and a hole at that end and you're able to then feed through the drawstrings and in order to do that you'd need to use a safety pin which you attach to your draw, drawstring and then feed it through yourself basically feeding it hand feeding it through and then pulling it through one goes one way all the way around and the other one start the other way and that way then when you tie them off you've got two to make your drawstring bag This uh, gift bag or uh, holder has got the waved ripples here, ripples along the bottom here. The anchor again has got this um, pattern stitch here, like a satin stitch with a little uh, jewelled um, pattern there. I've got the sequins here for bubbles and also I've got an anchor chain which I've designed here and just this blue motif to make it look more marine with again these these ripple pattern stitches here um, turning it round I did put a simple pattern stitch down the back of it you can probably still see I've got some pencil marks on it but to make it different I put some press uh, studs on and I sewed three sets of press studs on this uh, and I've also had to double up the felt on the press studs as well but they fit together well and they also the felt to make this is is, is tougher is actually proper felt it's not this isn't fleece so that's that's is probably probably you know it took, will take a bit more time to make that if you think thinking about things for younger people or people who are sort of got more of a sense of humor about things i went for these uh treasure chests with uh, uh diving helmets and basically you can cut the shapes out for the treasure chest from felt soft felt and use your press studs and of course your gold um, and you can use your gold for your treasure chest and you can go over your treasure chests here using a satin stitch here and different colored treasure chests again your anchors or your divers um, helmet here this would be a sort of diving helmet that uh, a diver would use where you would have a tube down down to the diving helmet so uh, he or she could breathe as they went down to the bottom of the sea looking for sunken treasure other things you can consider are fish obviously and you can look at tropical fish and cut out small pieces of felt for the various different colors that you might find along the fish and you can also use them to delineate their fins tail fins and dorsal fins etc and again you got you can do something like a jellyfish here and you can use pattern stitches inside the jellyfish and it's stinging tentacles you can have them trailing down okay and just ideas on a marine thing and you can use different different techniques for the drawstrings because um, again these are practical gift bags Oh
Watch out your longer tune on your nautical journey with the current strong. The sky's angry as the wave flash will bound. But inside is a glow of ship's lantern and the weather blasts and your heart sings now as the night's past. Far from the shores, do 